I bought this cheap $20 PS4 controller off Amazon. I'm going to examine it, test it on some games, and open it up to have a look inside. I bought it with my own money out of curiosity. This is not an endorsement deal or anything like that. I'm just going to let you know whether this controller is worth 20 bucks. So this is a wired controller sold by Sefatofer. I don't know how to say that. At the time I bought it, it was one of the top three cheapest controllers on Amazon. It also says it works on PC. Let's take a quick look at the box. It says Double Shock 4, which isn't a term they use on the Amazon listing. As usual with Made in China knockoffs, there's grammatical errors and oddly worded sentences like, never worry about running out of battery. Some text is so small I can't make it out. The thing about the box is they didn't glue it together very well. As soon as I let it go, it flew apart unceremoniously dumping the controller. This is not a good sign. My first impressions of the controller is that it doesn't actually look that bad. The grips actually feel high quality. The analog sticks, however, have little bristles along the edges. I guess it's to keep your thumbs from slipping. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable, just not typical. I've never seen bristles like this on a thumbstick before. Also notable is that they have a concave shape compared to the convex shape of the DualShock 4. The range in which the sticks move is more restricted than the DualShock 4. The circle you can make with them just isn't as big. The D-pad feels flimsy, but I think it'll do what it needs to do. Truthfully, I won't be using the D-pad that much in the games I'm about to test on. The triangle, square, X, and circle buttons are smaller and closer together compared to the DualShock. People with large thumbs may have a problem. The buttons also have a more rounded top to them compared to the flat top of the DualShock 4. The symbols on these buttons are slight deviations from the standard PlayStation symbols. Maybe they were trying to avoid getting sued. The symbols don't appear at all on the Amazon listing. The L1 and R1 buttons don't appear to function as smoothly as the DualShocks. You have to press in the middle to make it go straight down. If you press on the sides, it behaves like a teeter-totter. This may or may not be a big deal. I would normally be pressing it down in the middle. The L2 and R2 buttons actually feel very similar to the DualShock. They spring back the same way. I was very surprised. As for the rest of the buttons, no major complaints. I actually prefer these round share and option buttons over the DualShock's oddly shaped ones. Note, there is no headphone jack. The cord is 7 feet long. That's more than enough for my needs. And that's probably long enough for anyone. Time to test it out in some games. To start using it, you plug the controller in and turn things on using the power button on the console. Holding the home button does not turn on the console, because at this point there's no power coming to the controller, and it has no battery inside. Once the home screen comes up, you have to hold the home button for about 3 seconds, and that'll cause the system to recognize the controller. There's a small light on the surface, which is a nice touch. I started with Titanfall 2. As soon as I started playing, I noticed a big problem, and I instantly knew I was not going to recommend this controller to anyone. The precision needed to aim the gun properly was not there because the analog stick was too sensitive. Pushing slightly in one direction makes things move too fast, giving me a bit of motion sickness. I tried lowering the sensitivity, but it didn't help. Not only does it move too fast, it was imprecise. It was very hard to position my aim. As far as the other buttons, everything went okay. I switched between the DualShock and back just to feel the difference. The D-pad wasn't much of an issue, though the game doesn't use it that much. Overall, it was just the analog sticks that made it a sour experience. I then dove into Killzone Shadowfall. The game played even worse than Titanfall. The aiming is already tough in this game, and the analog sensitivity only made it tougher. The final game was Geometry Wars, and it fared better. Although it relies heavily on the analog sticks, the need for gradual movement is not as important in this game. If you play games like this, the controller isn't that bad. Note that I did not test the rumble. I never play these games with the rumble on. Let's take a look inside the controller to examine the quality. The screws were a bitch to take out, and it was hard to take it apart without feeling like I was breaking something. It's kind of cool the way the grips come off. They're like little condoms. One screw holds the board on. Unlike the DualShock 4, there's not much in the way of ribbon cables inside. Instead, there's tiny wires soldered to the board. It was very hard to get deeper without things falling apart, but I really wanted to take a look 
the analog sticks. The little boxes they attach to are small and made of cheap looking material. I suspect they might break after a while. That's pretty much all I have to say about this controller. Overall, I don't recommend it for anyone. So thank you for watching the video. May your games bring you happiness. See you next time.